Hello, my name is uh, uh, Cristina Poggi. I've been a breast radiographer for 20 years. I've been dealing with uh, training and education in mammography for 11 years, mostly here in Tuscany, Italy. Today's lesson is the first of a series of presentations about digital mammography. I'll be uh, speaking about uh, several topics using a lot of images and few drawings too. Each lesson lasts about 10 minutes. Today, I'll start with the basis of uh, uh, radiographic anatomy of the breast and the artifacts correlated to the patient. First of all, let's define what an artifact is. An alteration, which could be almost invisible or very important, of the final product, the image, after acquisition and reconstruction. It means that, because of the artifact, the reproduction of the object is not entirely true. Recognizing an artifact um, is crucial. And here you can see the most important reasons. Some of them can make reading a mammography very difficult, even impossible. Others mimic legends or can lead to technical records in a screening program. We can consider four different sources of digital mammography artifacts. The patient, the hardware, the software, and here I include also processing and archiving impacts, and finally the radiographer. This is the one we focus on today. Recognizing an artifact requires a very deep knowledge of the imaging methodology used and of evolutive, involusive anatomy and physiology of the breast. We have to know how mammography should be and can be imaged to be easily read by the radiologist. Radiographers must receive then a specializing theoretical and practical education in synology. This is the definition of artifact by Dr. Bassett. It is any variation of mammography density not caused by true attenuation differences in the breast. The difference between linear attenuation coefficients of the breast tissues, that is to say, the different capacity to attenuate the radiant beam, forms what is called anatomic contrast, which is very low in breasts. The image contrast, then, is expressed through different densities. Uh, you can see the dense area here, a radiopaque, it's fibroglandular tissue and the non-dense area, radiolucent, made of fat. Of course, pectoral myel muscle is dense too, but it is not a breast tissue. As we well know, by looking at the front of the breast, coronal plane, you can divide it in four quadrants, drawing two lines, or better, two planes perpendicular to one another passing through the nipple. Upper, outer, upper, inner, lower, inner, lower, outer. And this is the axillary tail or tail spans. Mammography is uh, uh, two dimensional, but acquiring the two standard projections enables you to recover real three dimensionality. This is the cranial caudal projection CC. There is a superimposition of superior on inferior tissues. This is the outer quadrant, axillary tail, inner quadrant, and the cleavage. This is the medial lateral oblique projection, MLO. There is a superimposition of inner on outer tissue. Uh, this is the superior quadrant, the inferior respect to this line called PNL. Posterior nipple line. We'll be talk about it in another lesson. This is the axillary tail. This portion can be called posterior inferior quadrant. It's just above and in front of the IMF. Very important to show in MLO view. Mammography is a very effective photography of the breast in anatomy. Going from anterior to posterior, you can see cutaneous or skin edge, at the apex the nipo-areolar complex, hypodermis 
also called subcutaneous fat, that could be of very different thickness in each patient, fibroglandular tissue, retinal mammary space, and pectoralis myer. Same structures in amyloid projection. Uh, you can find glandular tissue in the retromammary space. Sometimes we can also see as a denser triangle in the upper inner angle of the image another muscle, the latissimus dorsi. The breast gland is wrapped and divided inside by a three dimensional ligaments network called Cooper ligaments, um, which connect the gland anteriorly to the hypodermis and posteriorly to the pectoralis myer muscle. Here you can see uh, the uh, anterior portion of the ligaments called sometimes dure crest. And here the posterior portion uh, you can find the gland following the ligaments. All right then, let's talk about the artifacts and the uh, pseudo artifacts correlated to the patient. Examples of blurring due to passion motion during acquisition. Actually, in the first example, the artifact could be due to suboptimal compression of breast anterior portion, so should be ascribed to poor positioning. In the second example, motion blur of axillary tissues. These are examples of uh, artifacts mimicking lesions, microcalcifications, generally given by body lesion. Branching micro here caused by entrapping of antiperspirant cream in axillary folds. Intertrigo is a skin pathology caused by rubbing between two contiguous surfaces. It's very common in IMF, especially in big, heavy, and toxic breasts. We need to make sure uh, the patient had not put a lotion on and also check the IMF. It should be intact because otherwise doing mammography can cause painful tearing. Um, these are skin lesions. We have to uh, report them. Actually, some of them are very recognizable on the image. A sebaceous cyst like this one could be very dense. We can say there are an occlusive artifacts able to hide tissue, I mean, when they are big. Of course, the possibility to show them tangentially eliminates any doubts. Occlusive artifacts result from objects of body parts projecting themselves on the breast. Herrings, hair, chin. We have to check carefully about any shadow projecting onto the field of view. It could be the other breast too, which should be kept away by the patient herself. Here the patient's finger. Uh, some occlusive artifacts could be correlated to patient's uh, joint uh, pathologies or in healthy patient to their thoracic conformation. Here, an artifact due to the opposite hemothorax in a case of a pectus excavatum. Of course, we have also a brand new artifact in mammography due to fascia protection mask worn upside down with the nose bridge wire on the chain. Here, another kind of mask, same problem as well. Here, uh, you can see the shoulder tube out of the field of view. Another artifact correlated to the patient impossible to solve due to multiple injections of a hyaluronic acid in gel for the purpose of breast augmentation. Radiopaque and radiolucent fold in IMF, yeah, uh, but something we will talk about in the next lesson. Now I want to bring your attention to these uh, pseudo artifact. This one, uh, due to a very low thickness of this portion with respect to the others in a very tosy, sagging breast, very well stretched. A uh, good job of the radiographer, I'd say here. Another pseudo artifact, uh, usually seen only in CC view in the medial part, correspond to this. Uh, portion I draw. Uh, you could see it on MLO view too, but it's more unusual. 
It is um, an accessory muscle called sternalis in addition to pectoralis maya. A very interesting pseudo artifact, this one too, better seen on uh, magnified uh, images, Apua. These pots are probably cutaneous cavities in which fat columns from hypodermis fit in. They appear rounded because they are actual sections of a cylinder and radiolucent because they are made of fat. All right then, it's all for today. This is a short bibliography if you like to go deeper into some topics. Thanks for your attention. I hope I've been of any help. And sorry for any mistakes in English I could have done. Next lesson, if you like, in a week time. I'll be talking about the artifacts correlated to the radiographer. I'll focus on the skin folds due to improper stretching and flattening of the tissue acquired. For questions and suggestions, very welcomed indeed, this is my mail. Thanks again to the next, next time. Bye!